Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This video is merely dedicated to my father as a tribute to him. And I know some of you will question why it should be even there, published on YouTube. But um, I do this for a number of reasons. Uh, first, because I believe my dad would have expected me to say some words about him in his tribute. Two, uh, I believe there are other people around the world who are going through the same kind of emotional pain, maybe, for the loss of their family members, for losing someone uh, dear to them. And uh, another reason is that I believe uh, this case is not closed as far as I'm concerned until I make this video. This is a long overdue video that I'm making. It should have been made at least um, 10 months ago. My father passed away, or should I say was killed um, on 30th of September 2021 after contracting COVID-19 uh, on 16th of September 2021 and after exactly two weeks of battle with it and um, being taken to the hospital for treatment, a series of treatments including uh, remdesivir or remdesivir or whatever that is um, he finally on the 30th of September last year he surrendered his life to his creator my father never trusted the pharmaceutical industry the medical centers uh, no offense or disrespect to any of the, the staff, doctors, nurses. Uh, he, he always regarded them uh, just as he regarded and respected everybody else. But uh, he just didn't trust the system. His father was also the same. My father lost his father at the age of about three uh, when um, his dad was still a young man and he only died of pneumonia and, and he believed uh, he always told us that he believed he would have lived if he only went to hospital but he didn't because he didn't trust the doctors nevertheless um, same as my father I also believe that um, life and death is in the hands of the Lord I am miles away from my siblings and so I had not much of a um, say although I said what I wanted to say and, and the same as my father who uh, didn't want to go to the hospital uh, but they decided to take him, my siblings and my mother decided to take him because uh, he, he was collapsing and they couldn't help him and I, I believe they were in fear and uh, too much fear and uh, a lot of other things involved I believe there are a lot of mistakes to say the least and my dad would have lived at least um, at least another 10 years in good health and that is the least I could say well, he could probably live longer than that. He was a strong, healthy man, strong-willed person, strong in spirit, in mind, soul, and, and body. He never used any medicines regularly. All his life, 
apart from a couple of occasions that again my family took him to hospital. Uh, he never needed any hospitalization. He never needed any kind of treatments or medications and he never took any regular uh, medicine. Uh, my father always said, as far as I can remember, um, even at his very young age, uh, he said he didn't want to get to a point in his life that he's incapable of handling his own affairs and so other people would uh, take control of him basically. Uh, he didn't want to be dragged from one hospital to another, he didn't want to get that kind of position that he can't stand on his own two feet and um, he wanted to always be healthy and die um, when he is still healthy. In mind, body and spirit. And he got that wish, apart from a couple of occasions that my family took him to visit doctors and get some treatment. He never needed them and he never trusted them. Uh, he trusted his own strength, his own um, ability and he trusted that life is in the hands of the Lord. He believed that, I believe that and so because um, because I didn't want to have any kind of drift between the family members, I agreed to their decision uh, for taking him to the hospital and so they did. Uh, and my uh, view was that if God wanted to protect him, he will protect him no matter what and no matter what kind of poison they give him, he'll be still in the hands of the Lord and he'll be uh, healed. And I kept praying, but unfortunately on the 30th of September he gave up his life and he surrendered to his Creator. My father was a true gentleman. Uh, I'm not saying these words because he was my father and I'm not that kind of person to um, exaggerate things anyway and I'm not a kind of person to say good things after someone's gone. I said whatever I say here, I have said to him in his face. And so, uh, believe me, whatever I say here is 100% uh, truth. My father was a true gentleman, very honest. He never lied, he never liked lies or liars. And, and he passed that on to us as his children. My parents raised six kids, me being the last and the least of them. Uh, and my father, apart from his own children, he supported and accommodated a lot of other people in, dur during the span of his life. At different times, he supported and helped a lot of people, young and old, some of them older than himself. And he owed in his life to no one. He always lent, he never borrowed. He lived a true biblical life. And he didn't know much about the Bible. He hadn't read it. One thing I can say uh, that I have done for my father and my mother um, that no one else can claim is the fact that I introduced Jesus to them and my father and my mother accepted and received Jesus in their lives. Uh, of course this was after a series of uh, teachings and uh, the result of probably many years of teaching that he gladly received Jesus 
long before his departure from this world. He had lived his life um, even before that as a righteous man, holy, um, I can say in true sense he practiced uh, the, the principles of the Bible, the principles and the laws of God was truly written on his heart without him even having to read the Bible. He knew it all and he was practicing them. He did that all his life. For as long as I remember, he did all, all of them. And, and that goes on um, to say that he passed on a lot of those things to his children, to us. <sighs> he was a very kind, loving, forgiving person. He never held any grudges against anyone. He was protective of his family. He was very much of a family-oriented person and uh, worthy all around. Husband, father, uh, very handsome, uh, good-looking, I'll put, uh, maybe a couple of his pictures. Um, later on on the, on the website in relation to this video so people can see and please understand that this has taken me a couple of days over a year now to put my words together and say things as a tribute to my father he, he, he meant so much to me I know most fathers do to their children but um, my father was very very close to me closer than my own veins to my heart and um, I love him dearly words cannot express my feelings I have had dreams of him literally every night for at least uh, the first nine ten months and then after that I'm still dreaming of him literally every night but it's not direct um, so he, he's not basically in the center of the dream he is just there and uh, whatever I dream he is there as well with me he is on the forefront of my mind 24 7 and I can't stop thinking that he would have been alive today if he wasn't taken to the hospital. I don't know what went on and uh, I don't want to blame anyone uh, because I believe that if they didn't take him to the hospital they would probably blame themselves if things went wrong and they would probably blame me uh, and, and other things would happen. So you can never say who is right, who is wrong really in these kind of situations. But it's just my gut feeling and that my dad would still be with us uh, for a number of good few years. However, my dad was satisfied with his life. He always said that. Uh, for years he'd been saying that, that he was satisfied. Um, he was ready to go, he wasn't scared of death at all, he wasn't scared of this virus whatsoever, he was always saying this is just another flu, he always said that from the beginning of the pandemic. Um, he was never in fear of death whatsoever at any time in his life, as far as I remember he was never scared. And he was always saying, this is uh, part of our life journey. This is part of our journey and, and everybody will go through that. So there's nothing to be fearful of. He was fully aware to the last minute of his life of whatever was going on around him. 
and um, to the point that he didn't even want me to know about his illness. Because he thought I would be upset. He loved all his children. He was proud of them all. He, um, he always said also to everybody that he was proud of his children. He was satisfied with their achievements, with the way uh, him and my mother had managed to raise them all. And he was happy with them. Um, he loved them all equally. Um, He trusted me, he trusted my words, he believed me and he was really truly proud of me and my achievements and I was proud of him. He was my, um, the, my, the crown of my head, he was my glory, if you like. He was everything to me, he was my love, he was my motivation, he was everything to me. Um, if I say he was my God on earth, uh, some people might not like it, but that's how he was to me. He was almost like a God on earth for me. Uh, I was looking up to him in every area. I uh, cannot say that I have achieved, because I haven't. You know, like John the Baptist said about Jesus, I could only say that I am not worthy to untie my father's sandals because I have an achieved to do um, and be what he did in his life and what he was and who he was for, for others and for his own children. My father wasn't a millionaire uh, or a rich person in the sense that he had lots of land uh, a big mansion, lots of gold and silver, uh, he didn't. Uh, but what he, he did have, the, the little that he had, he shared with everyone that uh, he loved, that he cared for. Uh, even strangers. People that he trusted and loved and cared for. From, from his own relatives, to my mo mother's side, relatives, to total strangers, that he'd come uh, to know them. My father had a rich and very generous heart. Uh, like I said, he wasn't a millionaire by any means, but his door was always open to uh, people to friends and family, uh, he wouldn't withhold anything from you. If he could help, he would. My father was a strong, very uh, firm person, and very clever, sharp, and with a high IQ. With, with, with such a personality that no one would even dare to entertain the thought of even poking fun at him or, or worse, trying to take advantage of him in any way or shape. Uh, he would know uh, long before they even tried. And in fact, everyone highly respected him while he was alive, even to this day, um, everyone that he knew at one point in his life, they have high regards and respect for him. And, and the reason uh, we, as his children, as his family, have been respected by others uh, is mainly attributed to him, is because of him earning that respect for himself and his family. He knew the character, traits, personality, 
and even thoughts of everyone around him. He was better than a psychologist. He could read your mind. And you know it's difficult to love and forgive someone whose deepest intention of his heart or her heart you know. Because, you know, as the Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21, every inclination of the human heart is evil. It's difficult to love them uh, when you know their evil intentions in their hearts. However, my dad, knowing their hearts, knowing people's intentions, he still loved them and showed compassion towards people and forgave people who did him and his family harm. His character, in particular his unconditional love for his wife and his children, his family, his uh, forgiveness, his generosity, his sacrificial mindset were all reasons for me to understand uh, the unconditional love of Christ and the concept of God's ultimate sacrifice. And in a sense, he was the one who introduced Jesus to me first by his actions, by his um, lifestyle, by whatever he did, by his deeds rather than words. So me turning it back to him in words, turning um, the Bible basically back to him in words was just a reflection of how he lived and what he did for us all. He loved my mother so much, he was heard on his hospital bed um, calling for my mother every night while he was gasping for air because by that time his lungs were filled with liquid and, and he was struggling. The virus had taken over his lungs. Uh, however, he was calling for my mother um, and he was worried for her and for his children because they all had contracted the virus. And I unfortunately wasn't even there to, to attend or to be with him and I still believe that had I been there, things um, would have been probably different. Um, but whatever God's will is, um, will be done. My father's advice uh, to people and, and to his children were priceless. And I always said to him, your words should be written in gold and framed in gold. And um, one day I might put some of his words and phrases um, on, on my website for people to see because they genuinely were priceless with uh, little verses of poems here and there that were part of his upbringing and some, of, some were his own uh, made up poems or phrases. He, he never brought his standards down and he always stood on godly principles. My father was very much forgiving. He forgave even those who hurt him one way or the other. Forgiveness was part of his nature. There were many people in his life, some of whom are still alive to this day, whom uh, my father shared his bread with, but they betrayed him one way or the other. Uh, however, he forgave them, and his forgiveness was in a way that he would not even mention it ever again. And that's how he was. His love, his forgiveness were that of Jesus Christ. They were ingrained in him even before he knew um, about Christ. My father earned the respect of everyone whom he'd come in contact with. And these were people from all walks of life, young and old, male and female. 
rich and poor. And to this day, there are people who are still uh, coming to us and saying that they have never seen my dad doing anything wrong to anyone. He considered his in-laws as his own immediate family, as his own brothers and sisters. And, and they all respected him and looked up to him. Uh, most of them, if not all, uh, considered him as a role model and they wanted to be like him and they wanted to have their children to be like his children. Uh, and to this day, none of them can say uh, what my father said. He said that he was happy and satisfied with his children and their achievements. But I don't think wholeheartedly any of my uh, uncles or aunties, my relatives, I can say that uh, hand on heart. My dad never bullied anyone, uh, but he would never let anyone bully him either. He would never let anyone uh, take advantage of him in any way or shape. He wasn't scared of anyone or anything, even death. But he was in fear of God, always. And, and you could only see that in his actions throughout his life, his entire life. He was very much a level-headed person. You could have a heated argument with him over something, and next minute uh, you could be rest assured that he would be there for you if you needed any help or advice. He would never mix the two in any way. He was not only my father, he was a close friend to me and to all his children really. It would be impossible for me to list the things that I've learned from him, the things that um, you cannot find in any book, in any library, in any university. He always and always encouraged us all to study further and further and he supported us to achieve our potentials. He put aside the pleasures of life that he could rightfully have for the sake of his own children. He literally sacrificed his life for us. And I'm so certain that my life would have taken a totally different course had it not been for him being my father. I would have not achieved what I have achieved. I would have not been where I am and I would have not been who I am without him being my father, of course. And at the end, I would like to read a few passages of scripture for you to encourage those who are going through the same pain. And please forgive me for this video being um, late. And I hope my father, if he can hear my words, um, understand, I know he will forgive. I hope he understands why it's taken me so long to make this video. Um, I would like to read from Isaiah chapter 57 verse 2, which is the only verse of scripture that has given me comfort over the loss of my father. Uh, and um, anyone dear to me really. It reads, the righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. Devout men are swept away while no one considers that the righteous are guided from the presence of evil. Another uh, translation says, um, the righteous is spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace they find rest lying down in death. I believe my father was saved and spared from the evil to come. Also, I would like to read Corinthians chapter 15, verses from 12, I start from 12 to 58. 
But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he didn't raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, which makes a lot of people in the church, we are all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the first fruits. We will be the following fruits. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, so there will be no death anymore. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now, if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? if the dead are not raised. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts character. Come back to your senses as you ought. And stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just the seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another. Birds, another, and fish, another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, 
the star is another and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. We will be raised imperishable in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. We will have a spiritual body like Jesus had when he was resurrected. He could pass through closed doors, through walls, but he could, he could be also touched and felt. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. There you go. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual didn't come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you, a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. And we will be changed, for the perishable will be clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where of death is your victory? Where of death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Thank you for watching. A year is gone since my dad's departure and I will always miss him. Always. May he rest in peace. In Jesus' name. May God be with you and bless you. Thanks for watching. God bless you.